Hello there folks, I'm Dan Brown from a sort of interesting life.com. You're joining me on board good old narrowboat Tilly as always, and today I would like to fetch you along for a boat trip, but not just to enjoy the scenery of a 5 hour 12 mile boat trip, yes I only got 12 miles in 5 hours of travelling, but that's what it's all about. Instead this, I want to focus more on the actual experience of boating, and just the things that you look out for and see, and not necessarily the sort of things that when you are some of the videos I've done in the past where it's just a tripod on the roof going down the canal. This is more about the surroundings and just the actual boat in itself and really I suppose instead of me talking about it let's dive in see some lovely footage and have a chat. So we're heading away from Ellesmere here through the tunnel and we'll find Blakemere, an absolutely beautiful place just on the other side. And really I suppose we'll start off by saying that because we're travelling with the flow of water here, you don't have the resistance of the water going against the bow and rather the water gives you a little boost if anything. And it's one of those things that, like I say, this video is all meant to be about just talking about the actual boating experience rather than individual places and stuff like that. But well we're in the tunnel I'll just say that it's an amazing thing that when I've been dragging Tilly through a tunnel by hand in the past going downstream now I could literally switch the engine off and here is Blakemere I just wanted to throw this in how fantastic is it that you can literally moor your boat up there and open the curtains to that in the morning anyway um, as I was saying with the tunnel then that's a great sort of boating experience really just for the novelty value but um, the fascinating thing is with the water being channeled into a much narrow area than I mean this is a turning point so this is an extremely wide part of canal but with the water being sort of funneled into there it gives you a lot more of a resistance if you're taking a boat upstream through a tunnel rather than there as we were heading downstream through the tunnel with the water I could literally have switched the engine off and it would have pushed us straight through the tunnel. We definitely would have been scraping on the sides left, right and centre, but it would have at least pushed us downstream away uh, with the water. Whereas when I've tried to drag it through that tunnel in the past by hand, it's been quite an ordeal, we'll say that much. But what I really want to show and what I really want in this video to um, highlight is that how much of the canal around here is sided with hedgerows and trees and you've got all these overhanging trees everywhere so you need to take extreme care not to uh, lose your chimney cowl sometimes and also how the trees themselves sort of block out so much of the view because a lot of people have asked me in the past to do a boat trip where the camera's pointing sideways or the camera's higher up and basically where the camera is not pointing directly down the canal you can see we're passing the boats very slowly here down at Linnell and ultimately I would love to do that but you can see from all these different shots just how much of the canal is completely and utterly sided with trees and here is one little uh, part at Wixel Moss the little viewing platform over all of that flat area and again you can see to the right hand side of this video and when the camera pans back around just how flat so much of this area is and Shropshire is extremely flat and when you go up some of the little hills you literally can see for miles miles upon miles upon miles around because it's just well it's very very flat there's no other way to say it um but as I was saying though the thing with the trees is that it blocks out so much of the view of all of the flatland some of the nice sort of hilly areas that we'll come up to just around here and I mean when I'm saying hilly areas they're not even hills in the sense that you would even really notice it if you were doing anything other than maybe a bit of biking but again you can just see there just in the edge how flat it all is and again to the right hand side of here there's loads of big pools that just take, well, take uh, make the most of this huge flat area and that's something that's particularly difficult to illustrate and talk about when I'm talking about like how beautiful the canal is and all that sort of stuff that you do have this canal running through this amazing area in all this rural sort of Shropshire environment and apart from the fact that I'm on my bike so often going all over the place I could miss so much of it because from the canal you can't necessarily see very far and there's obviously all sorts of different stretches of canals going through different environments but say the Langofflin that we're on at this point then the Shropshire Union and I mean there's just huge huge stretches of 
goodness knows, I mean, 100 mile plus stretches of canal where you barely see anything particularly urban whatsoever. Again, you can see just from this little bit here how flat, again, everything still is. And this is where Tilly is currently moored up, as I'm um, tell or talking to you at the moment. Uh, just up past where that boat's moored ahead is where Tilly is at this exact moment of recording, next to some cows just over to the left-hand side over the hedgerow. Again, though, this showing that you can't really see even... The, well, you can see that little barn building, I suppose. I was telling you a, a porky pie there. Um, but you get the general gist that you can't really tell what's on either side of the canal here because it's just complete hedgerows. But when the hedgerows do vanish, I mean, what a great view this is. You've got horses. I don't know if you want to go back and pause that and have a look again as the tree there had a big old sort of wooden platform built around it as a little tree house on the trunk. And um, it's just, again, I mean, I can't tell you how much I love the fact that I've been so lucky to grow up in Shropshire and go out on my bike and walk in and all these different things that I show you in all these videos. But being able to take a boat down the middle of it all and moor up in different places and set off and explore is what really is just why I love boat life so much. You can see here, this is the bridge that about three or four months ago I came across and was the second boat to find that it was broken after somebody had tried to drive over it before it had actually been put down and of course in the usual way it's been cranked up, strapped in place and work is still ongoing months later. And again, these are just a few photos to show you a general gist of a bit of the scenery that you can expect, as I say, in these extremely rural areas of the canal. But what I hope you're taking away from um, some of this footage is that it's just so unspoilt and quiet in so many of these places. And that, again, is something that when I'm sitting down, particularly over the quieter months, because it gets to absolute chaos over the summer months, again, this video is all about the actual boating experience. Again, there, not really much to see other than just a few fields disappearing and all relatively flat. Um, but I don't know, I've completely lost my thread. As I was uh, starting to say, though, the difference between going on a boat trip for any sort of distance over the summer and the difference between doing that in the middle of winter is unbelievable, where you don't have the summer traffic, all the holiday traffic, all the boats coming out of the marinas that people will tend to leave over the marina, in the marinas over the winter. And as I say, it's just one of those experiences that... You can do one boat trip and say go through the New Martin locks at St Martin's and it might take you an hour or so just to go down through the two locks and maybe a mile or so on either side. Or you can do it in the middle of summer where you may have seen the recent video I uploaded where I think was it about um, three, was it three? four hours or three hours or I don't know but basically it literally took hours and hours and hours like easily like three times as long because we were in a queue to get through the locks but then you throw in all the other elements of actually meeting people and talking to different people and finding out where they go in and that community element whereas in the summer it's well I've literally been to Tilly and walked around on the canal and found that over the winter months there's times where Tilly has literally been the only boat in miles of canal and that's just absolutely crazy to think that then you could go fast forward six months and literally not be able to moor up at that particular point say somewhere like the Poacher's Pocket or Chirk or any of those sort of popular areas because there will just be dozens and dozens and dozens of boats that you could count within a couple of minutes of walking really. Anyway, as we arrive here at Witchich, I'm going to wrap things up and say thank you very much for watching. Check out my other videos for loads more boaty bits and please do check out my books for the Kindle, all about uh, narrowboat life, nice and short, all that sort of stuff. Find them by searching Amazon for The Narrowboat Lad or find links to those as well as Facebook and Twitter and all that sort of stuff in the description below. And I really just want to take this as a moment as well to say a huge thank you to everybody who has been spreading the word about the books and leaving reviews and that it's fantastic and I'm so glad that people actually have enjoyed them so thank you so much I hope you enjoy the videos that I've got lined up as well but until the next time at this absolutely beautiful place I'm gonna say well just the usual I suppose keep it boat worthy have an absolutely fantastic week and until the next time farewell